At Beefsteak Charlie's, for just $9.99, get all the barbecue baby back ribs you can eat. Potato, unlimited shrimp and salad, and beer, wine, or sangria. All for $9.99 at Beefsteak Charlie's. Civil danger for Essex County. Three separate murders were reported to have taken place at around midnight today. These killings are entirely separate to the murders Thursday afternoon. The suspect of these cases may be the same. However, there are no descriptive details and all information given to authorists has been declared vague. Shelter in place. It sounds like an epic disaster movie. Three million acres of U.S. land flooded. Natural gas pipelines to more than half of the United States knocked out. And at least one American city swept away to South America. But this is not science fiction. Bruce Hall, Bruce Hall explains how this nightmare might become reality. Springtime is flood time in Louisiana. The snows of winter and rains of spring funnel water from nearly two-thirds of the... Anything 
information regarding the Coria disappearance or the murders is highly appreciated by the Essex County Sheriff's Office. Chief Ward. Yes, sir. We've received a file regarding the case codenamed Thinskin. I'd like to share the details. All right, let's see it. We've seen scattered reports of a man acting in an abnormal manner. Two of these reports in particular describe the face of the man. He has no skin on his face. You're kidding, right? He shouldn't even be alive with that kind of mutilation. But, well, we haven't received any updates. Chances are he's still alive. Shouldn't his face be infected to hell and back? That shouldn't be survivable. It shouldn't, but let's move on. This report was from two days ago, on the same day that multiple murders were reported in Cedar Grove and Hunterdon. Not to mention some drawings made by a child, but we're not going to get into that right now. Everything about this case is hazy. Nothing really makes sense from my standpoint, like no skin, and he's still alive. I can see why the murders can be connected, but still, how? You're not alone, Chief Ward, but this is the best we have. We'll have to leave it here, for now. Last name, Jared. This tape is held by Huntley Ward of Union, New Jersey. Only authorized peoples are to be in possession of this tape. This tape was created in text form and will be read by speech synthesis. Ever since this case was brought up to me, nothing seemed normal. It's an occasion we've never seen before. A man mutilating himself just so he can escape the authorities, which should kill him anyway, right? Apparently not. Not in the case of Errol Jared, at least. We were finally able to identify him using some evidence including a singular piece of paper from a young child named Jonas. Jonas's evidence was surprisingly useful. We originally directed our colleagues to use the boy's evidence with caution, because, well, he is only a kid. We can't entirely trust him. Even though our biggest objective so far has been completed, there's still much to do. We still have to apprehend Errol Jared, and additionally, we have to figure out how he has remained healthy and unscathed despite the fact that he skinned himself. His face, at least. I was given an artist's depiction of what Jared should look like now. It's not too useful. It's so high contrast that we have to pay very close attention to details. I will try to get that fixed up. I also want to mention something that was reported this morning, the story of Alexander Lacord. The way he described Jared's methods of killing. It's harrowing. I have not even seen it in person like Mr. Lacord had. And it's still terrifying. He had to see it himself, and it traumatized him. God bless him. There's not too much we can do to find out where Jared is. He is always on the move at such a fast pace that nobody can keep track of him accurately. All we can actively do now is learn from the cases that have already happened. Not good. We have to get a move on before others get hurt. 
as for what has happened, we mostly are working on identifying the victims. It's a process, as all of the victims we've seen were bored relentlessly. One victim we've managed to identify was 15-year-old Jack Lockhart Watson. Jared goes after anyone. Child, teen, adult. It's disgusting. We also identified 37-year-old Patty Donaldson, the wife of my good friend and colleague Thomas Donaldson. He is in a lot of pain. It's not a good sight to see. From here the only thing I remember to have left out are the television malfunctions and interceptions. We were investigating those when we found out the source of one. One case displayed a text line saying, I can't stop it, they're dead because of me. The source of this interception was... Alexander Lacord. We only found evidence for that one case in particular. We're looking into the others. Essex Community Television shut down for maintenance due to these interruptions, too. That's all that I can think of off the top of my head. I will get back to this when I can. Chief Ward out. Thank <laughs> you.